My great-great-grandmother, Mama Lala, was a Pony Express rider in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. Now, I am talking that saddlebag-wearing, pistol-toting on the back of a horse kind of gal. She went through her work with a sense of urgency. And when she wasn't doing that, she was giving back to the community through the kids that were being raised and all of the things that she was giving back to them, again, with urgency and purpose. That same sense of urgency was passed down to my mother two generations later. The amount of things that that woman could accomplish would blow your mind. Every minute of every day was filled with raising her 10 kids or giving back to her community. You see, I believe that that came down to the bloodline, and I, too, have an S chromosome, an S for speed. <laughs> so it is that speed and urgency that has allowed me over time that when people say things like, slow down, patience is a virtue, it's a bit of like fingers on nails on a chalkboard to me. I don't understand it, right? Because everything about me has been fast, whether I'm hiking up a hill, riding my bike, walking to church. I did it fast. There was a sense of adrenaline, the feeling in my cheeks of wanting to accomplish getting to church, of all things but wanting to do and give back to the world. So, my sense is there are a lot more of those types of people in this world. And this is what this conversation is for. Because if you are that F-18, Tom Cruise maverick, flying through the sky, speed kind of person, this is for you. And if you live with that type of person, you're going, what do I do with them? This is also for you. <laughs> Because whether you're a glider turning into a jet, I hope today that through this conversation, I can teach you that, quite frankly, urgency is also a virtue. Now, you may wonder, why is this person giving this talk, right? What is it about her that is that urgent component? Well, it could be the 20 years that I've spent in healthcare, a very urgent kind of industry, or humanitarian efforts across the world or living and breathing with these urgent, amazing kind of folks. And through this, I've gotten to see some of the things that make them tick. So with that, let's get started. And what we're told is that you should teach in threes, but us urgent types, we go fast, so I'm gonna give you four. <laughs> so the first one is we go fast. So you know what? Let us. We get a bit of dopamine by not only adding to our plates, and taking it off, but putting more on it. Again, that sense of patience, we just don't understand it. We are the types that take the work of the patient folks in the world, our brothers and sisters, and we amplify it. We put it to work. You want those urgent folks on your team. And you may say, uh, how do they do all this? How is this gonna get accomplished? Well, we come to the second element. You know, we see time as a challenge. So what do you mean by that? We literally take every second of every day, we wake up wondering, what are we going to do? Who are we going to give to? How much are we going to get accomplished, not only within ourselves, but the world? And in the words of a personal coach, Marty Nemco, to urgent folks like us, an hour is not an hour. We look to see 24 hours in a day, is that it? Well, let me give you another example. Every morning, I warm up a cup of coffee. It takes me exactly one minute and 10 seconds to warm up that cup of coffee. <laughs> you know what I can get accomplished in that one minute and 10 seconds? I can fold clothes, I can put them in the laundry, they're downstairs, I can answer 25 emails, I can send 25 emails, I can finish a speech. <laughs> one minute and 10 seconds. You see, I believe that we are a bit of time benders. We can take that urgency that's within us and amplify it to two to three times what maybe some other folks are able to do. Which then you may say, but huh, aren't you reckless? Aren't you kind of careless in what you do? Mm, no, no. Third element. We tend to be deliberate and we work pretty smart. And why do we do that? Because we want to do more. We want to give back. So, that deliberateness, that sense of focus, it takes us to a point of creativity. 
right? So we're able to be creative in that moment so that we can do more, be more, act more, give more to this world. We act with deliberateness, focus, and, and quite a bit smart. I won't say smarter, but pretty smart. As for the reckless part, uh, let me give you this piece. The transportation engineers did a study recently, and they looked at people who drove 10 miles over the speed limit and 10 miles under the speed limit, and you know what they found? The folks that drove 10 miles under the speed limit caused six times more accidents. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I am not telling you to speed, folks. Not telling you that at all, but I am saying there just might be a little bit of a trade-off there. So let me get to my fourth piece. Right? So the fourth is these folks who live and breathe with, with urgency, we tend to do that with a deep sense of purpose. For the last 10 years, I've done um, beautiful work in the country of Papua New Guinea, humanitarian efforts there. And with a wonderful organization, if, with one of the things that we are, are dedicated to is to uh, anti-gender-based violence with women. There's no time for patience for that. We must act with urgency. And actress Mandy Moore said the same thing with her work in Central Africa when she said, the suffering of women must be done today. We must do it urgently. Or, amazing painter has said that there is a way for us to be painting in a way. Picasso and Leonardo da Vinci, they said, you cannot do that patiently. There is an urgency to give. Doing is not enough, we must act. And then if that's not enough, the Journal of Health and Psychology has actually said that those with a sense of purpose tend to have a better well-being. They have fewer heart attacks. They have fewer strokes because of this deep sense of purpose. So, with all of this, what do you do with it, right? How do you live with these tips with folks that act and live in an urgent moment? Well, let me give you some of those tips as well. First, you let us go fast, right? And when things are coming off our plate, you add more. And when you tell them, please rest, understand our idea of rest might be doing something else urgent. <laughs> Maybe a little less urgent, but still urgent. We have constantly got to give. The way that you can convince us to rest, and those rests are in little snippets, is for you to tell us, hey, in order for you to give more, be more to this world and to others, just take a little bit of rest yourself, and then you're going to allow to give back. So then, what if you want to be one of those urgent types? Well, I got a few tips for you. First, wake up every single day with the sense of grabbing every 18,000 seconds of it, right? <laughs> Grab them with a sense of purpose. Grab them with a sense of passion of what you want to do with that day and be unapologetic about it. Marianne Williamson, a poet, said in when she started Project Angel Food, she stated, hunger and illness cannot wait. I must do it urgently today with passion. The other thing for you to do is tell someone about this. Hey, I want to kind of be an urgent type, hold me accountable, make me go fast, make me do, you know, make me or help me become that person. That accountability piece is everything. And finally, if you want to taste it a little bit, jump on board with us. You might get tired, you can jump off when you want, <laughs> but you can get a sense of how that urgent and wonderful life tends to breathe out. So, my friends, the world needs all of us, every one of us, the patient ones and those who live life and their gifts with a sense of urgency. Because had my grandmother, my great-great-grandmother not done that, nor the male or she would have made it, right? And if this patience is a virtue thing doesn't work out for you, hopefully I've made a case for something else, speed, and urgency. And I want to thank you, but guess what? I got to run. <laughs>